Looking for a movie that celebrates Irish stereotypes more than The Quiet Man? Well, Darby O'Gill and the Little People is the film for you. Yeah, I'm not gonna act like a lot of this isn't played up to the nth degree and over the top, and oh, yeah, it can be painful at times. But again, to its credit, there's a real charm that goes along with it. They have very likable actors that have a lot of heart. The effects are unbefriggin' leavable, even by today's standards. And the story is just a great hodgepodge of all sorts of things Irish and goofy and mythical and legendary and all that fun stuff. So what's the story? Darby O'Gill is an old man who's trying to find the king of the little people. He always tells stories in bars about how he comes across him, but of course nobody ever believes him. But Darby's destined to prove that he's right, and he comes across a well that he falls down through easily the worst effect in the movie. <laughs> Seriously, with all these other groundbreaking effects, you couldn't do that one a little better? And he comes across King Brian and his merry men. They say that he has to stay there forever, but he manages to slip out. When King Brian goes to capture him back, Darby takes advantage and captures him instead. And every time he's trying to prove someone that he actually captured the King of the Leprechauns, King Brian always has some sort of trick to fool him again. So that's one story going on. The other is that Darby has a daughter, a beautiful young maiden named Katie, who apparently is being courted by Sean Connery. Yep, Sean Connery. And on top of that, he sings. She is my dear, my darling one, my smiling and big island one. I love the ground she walks upon, my darling Irish girl. Yep, there's nothing like a Scottish man doing an Irish accent while poorly dubbing his own voice in a musical moment. But things heat up when Katie is on death's door. Only in Irish lore, it's not the Grim Reaper that comes for her, it's the Banshee. A lot of people may remember that I put this as the number one scariest nostalgic moment and everyone sort of called bullshit on it. And yeah, maybe they're right, maybe it is a little silly now, but I'm sorry, this thing still scares the shit out of me. Especially when he opens the door here. That is scary as fuck. Yeah, the effect is kind of dated. Yeah, we know how it's done, but just, don't! Oh, it's just so creepy. And that's kind of one of the nice things about this movie. Even though there's a lot of chipper, upbeat things in it, there is also sort of that dark undertone that's throughout the whole thing. The things that the people want to do in this are actually pretty mean. Darby tries to feed the leprechaun to his cat, or the leprechauns try to keep Darby there for the rest of his life. Hell, Darby tries to rob them on several occasions. There's headless horsemen on carriages. It's kind of messed up. It's kind of like a dozen Ace of Fables being webbed together with Irish lore, and it works out pretty well, and still creates for the most part a pretty flowing narrative. The actors, I think, find just that right mix of charming and kind of goofy. The guy who plays Darby is pitch perfect. He is just so enjoyable. He kind of reminds me of a white Uncle Ramus. It's just, how can you not enjoy his stories? How can you not enjoy every single time he opens his mouth and starts talking? He's just friggin' delightful. Sean Connery, though pretty unknown at the time, is actually a pretty good lead in this too. I swear to God, Darby's daughter must have the prettiest, most adorable smile in this. Oh my God, I just want to eat her up. Even though she's not dubbed very well either. He is my dear, my darling one, his eyes so sparkling full of fun, no other, no other can match the likes of him. You actually really feel this sense of community in this town. You feel like you understand them and actually kind of want to know them more. You kind of want to go to this pub, or you kind of want to work in these fields, or you kind of want to eat dinner in this house. I don't know, there's just something very homely about it that I really like. Though, yeah, I don't know how Irish people would necessarily look at it because, kind of obviously, it's a bit over the top. It's kind of like how the 70s look back on the 50s and we got Greece. This is kind of how white Americans look at Irishmen and, well, this is the product of that. But I think it's hard is in the right place, and like I said, I think these actors are just so good and so charming and so likable, and the effects are incredible, and the music is great, and oh, there's just so much to like in it. So it's hard to say. If you're an Irish person, I can vouch for it, and I could be totally wrong in saying that you won't get offended. You have every right to be offended if you are. But just know that a lot of people nowadays know that this is played up as well, and enjoy it because it is just so fun and silly. Especially if the people watching know that it's played more for goofs and laughs. So I say it's definitely a fun flick, and we're checking out. Hey, I, 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 I,